Glaucoma Research Foundation is fortunate to have a group of ambassadors around the country who work with their patients to help them become better informed about glaucoma and utilize some of our materials in their practices. I'm delighted today to have Andrew Iwa, our Glaucoma Research Foundation board chair, and of course, glaucoma specialist who many of you know, uh, to share some of his practices in his office in helping his patients with Glaucoma Research Foundation materials. So Andrew, I'm curious, our Gleams newsletter is something that you've used with your patients for years, and we're always looking for ways to get patients signed up. And how do you handle that in your practice? Well, we've tried different ways over the years. And what really, at the end of the day, made it really work consistently was that whenever I, certainly when I saw a new patient, I would tell them about Gleams. What works best is we actually, when I bring them up to the counter, when we finish the visit, after I've gotten their permission to do so, I have our staff actually fill out that very quick one-page form. And really it's a service for them because it gives them up-to-date information for them and their family members. From my perspective, it also helps as a reminder, especially for patients I don't see that often who may be doing better, because I know that every few months they'll get something either in the email or in the post in the mail yeah. that'll remind them about glaucoma. So it's, I see it only as a win-win. Uh, they'll learn about glaucoma, it helps with compliance, uh, and ultimately, of course, uh, it may help GRF down the road. So, Andrew, I think that's terrific, and I think a key point for the ambassadors is the fact that your staff actually fills out the information for the Gleam subscription. And so you found a way to get that done and to do it in an easy and and a painless way for the patients and to assure that your patients actually get subscribed to Gleams. And it, and it just takes a few seconds. And it, for the new patients, it's easier because you know that they probably don't currently have, they're not currently subscribing to it. But even with uh, current patients, uh, it just takes a few seconds. I'll ask, are you still receiving the Gleams? And it's a yes, no question. And then if they say yes, which is often they'll say, say, well, how do you like it? And that also gives us just a couple of seconds of banter and they give me some feedback. 99.9% .9 of the time, they love it. They say it gives me some useful tips or so forth and so on. But it's just a, just takes a few seconds to make that connection. Knowing I'm very, very busy, then when the patient gets to the front desk, knowing they're busy too, is having that one page form, all we have to do is they've now given permission for us to release their information from our practice via that green sheet yeah. to GRF to then put them on, on the mailing list. Well, that's terrific, and we do get a lot of Gleam subscriptions from your office, and I think patients really appreciate that you'll go that extra effort to get them signed up. With any new patient, that they get, will always get an understanding of living with glaucoma booklet, as well as the current issue of Gleams. So the process in our office is, is the staff will stock not only the waiting room and the exam rooms, but within each exam room, we actually have a cabinet, a standard cabinet, where they will have extra copies of Gleams and the understanding of living with glaucoma. So during a busy clinic day, if we see that we're running out in an exam room, which can happen, uh, then we'll just quickly easily restock from within the exam room itself. Mm -hmm. And with every new patient, uh, I will, when I start the discussion, I will bring out the booklet and say, uh, much of what we'll talk about is in this booklet, and then I'll flip to the back and I say, and here's the website. Right. You can get even more information later on. And then I'll hand them a co the current copy of Gleams. This is useful information for you and your family. Uh, and when we leave, we'll go ahead if, with your permission. We'll sign you up because I think you'll enjoy receiving this. And you'll have a choice of paper or electronic, whatever you prefer. And it's a service for the patients. It's a good thing to do. They get useful, vetted information. Yeah. And it helps with compliance. And ultimately, it may help the Glaucoma Research Foundation down the road. Absolutely. Well, and I think you're point about reminding patients that they have glaucoma because if they get our e-gleams every month they're going to get some interesting information about how to live with glaucoma and about the research we fund and then also I love that you point out the website because a lot of people when they get home they're trying to remember what you said or what they discussed with you and now they can go on the website and get their questions answered so that's very helpful. Exactly because there's only so much you can put in the booklet and right. this gives them the door to get more information. And I think the issue of vetted information is really important because online, as you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. Yes. And, to, and, and we and the Glaucoma Research Foundation team spend so much time finding uh, pertinent information, but also accurate information. 
And yeah. so that's a that's a huge plus. Well, and I think you know that we have an editorial board for Gleams, which includes glaucoma specialists and scientists, so that we really do our best to make sure the information is accurate and up to date. So another question for you. Um, we're fortunate that many of the patients from your practice have become significant donors to Glaucoma Research Foundation. And what we know is that patients who have been taken care of for years, who have preserved their vision, where you've helped them, that they somehow would like to reciprocate. They'd like to give back. They'd like to do something to show their appreciation. And I'm just curious, how do you get into that conversation with a patient? Or what, what do you look for that helps you know when to say, well, would you like to talk to somebody at the Glaucoma Research Foundation? How do you do that? You know, interestingly, I have never asked a patient to make a donation. Right. And, but my ears are open for the opportunities. That's the key. That's yeah. the key. And so uh, it's a process. So with the Understanding Living with Glaucoma booklet, with Gleams, they now know something typically about the Glaucoma Research Foundation before they get to that point in their life that they're thinking of doing something. Mm -hmm. And so again, what typically happens is it's in a busy clinic, so you don't have a lot of time to deal with it. Right. And so one of the things I do is just, I'm honest. I say, you know, this is a great organization. They do good work. They're very responsible with their funds. They find great researchers. They have a good committee of people to try to identify where should we invest now to give better solutions for patients today and ultimately find a cure. And that messaging, when they see that, uh, that this has been vetted by me, because they, they trust me, I'm their you know, glaucoma specialist, I think that helps them then take that next step. But what's the clue to you to get into that conversation? What do they do? during an appointment or what happens where you, what makes you share that? It would, it'll be something like, you know what, I'd like to do something. So they're going to ask you, they're going to say, I'd like to help or I'd like. And it, it doesn't happen often, but often enough, enough that it makes a difference. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I'm redoing my will. I'm thinking I'd like to do something to help remove the glaucoma problem. What can I do? And, uh, and I think that that's a matter of comfort with you as, their, as a doctor-patient relationship that they right. will ask. But when that opportunity arises, it has to be addressed and promptly. The reality is, is we're seeing so many patients, our time is so limited in the clinic. And that, that and again, I've, I've never asked myself as a direct fundraiser, but to make sure that there's a process that gets their information in a timely fashion to the GRF team. Yeah. And I'll make a quick note in my chart so that on their subsequent visit, I'll ask, hey, did you hear from, oh, who did you try to go? Yeah. And so that closes the loop yeah. in case. Yeah. So, so it, but as, as a busy clinician, uh, it, it, you only have so much time. Well, and I certainly appreciate, and as you say, it doesn't happen often, but when it does happen, we jump on it and usually I'll call them the same day or the next day or Nancy will be right back. And then we try to give you feedback that yes, we did speak with Mrs. Jones or whatever. And uh, again, just simply to close the loop and, and thank you, you know, for referring them to us. And, and, and the patients, those particular patients are grateful for the referral because they're Absolutely. in a position that they want to do something yeah. and they want to do the right thing with the right people, with the right organization. And the fact that I make that referral, and the GRF team is fantastic. You guys are, you know what you're doing, you're professional, timely fashion. That actually makes me look good. And so it's That's a win. That's nice to hear. <laughs> it's a win, win, win. They're happy that yeah. they're contributing. I'm happy that I could facilitate. And of course, it helps our ultimate goal of curing this disease. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your ideas. My pleasure. And, um, we're just grateful not only to you and your colleagues at the at Glaucoma Center of San Francisco, but to our ambassadors around the country and who are also sharing this information with your patients. So thank you for being part of Glaucoma Research Foundation. Thank you.